I did pain pills for about seven, seven years, and then um, they changed all the formulas and they were harder to get, and I just kind of started doing heroin. It was cheaper. 29-year-old Kurt Byrne has been clean for almost two years, but it's been a long and difficult road to recovery. Uh, I was uh, dependent on the opiates, um, so it was an easy transition for me because it was easier for me to acquire heroin and to stay well, and I was getting more high. Um, but that only lasts so long to the point where you're spending just as much money, if not more. Um, you're injecting it. Kurt's mother, Trish, says she considers herself lucky because her son has survived an addiction that's killing so many young people. I enjoy every day that we have this relationship. Um, and I, I hope for every family out there that they can get to the place that we're at. They got here in part by communicating with each other, but also with the world. Trish has been writing a blog about their struggles, a blog that's gone viral. With one post, I raised an addict, getting nearly 800,000 hits. The blog itself was an accident. Uh, what I, when I sat down and wrote, it was frustration. I write a lot, and, and then I pile up my computer next to pictures I don't print, and I move on. And I had sent it to Kurt, and he said, we should put this out. The Burns are part of a growing community of recovered addicts, their families, and public health officials taking on the opiate crisis in Colorado. So it has been this Friday, it will be three years since I've seen the face of my son and his smile. The JP Prescription Drug Awareness Foundation, named after JP Carroll, who died from a prescription drug interaction in 2012, has been working with state officials to raise awareness. And the Colorado Consortium for Prescription Drug Abuse Prevention was created two years ago to establish a coordinated statewide response to the opiate crisis. If I have guns and ammo, I would treat it the same way. They're just as lethal. 21-year-old Jesse Wheeler was addicted to pills and heroin, but he now devotes much of his time to helping other young addicts, using his own success to smash some of the stereotypes associated with heroin addiction. I don't go day in, day out and think, oh my gosh, I need to go use, because um, with, with the time that I've accumulated, it, that, that has left. I guess the biggest struggle in recovery is the stigma that's associated with it. You know, um, I'm very vocal about my my position and, and my recovery. Um, and the reason being is because um, of the reactions I get from other people sometimes when they, when they hear that. They say, you, you uh, used to be homeless and unemployed and, and now look at you. For these former addicts and their families, their message is a far cry from the strict just say no campaigns of the past. They're calling to treat former and current drug users with empathy and an open mind. Not having a clear and open communication between parents and, and um, their children can just exacerbate it for much longer than it needs to be versus trying to, um, you know, nip in the bud early on and figure out what to do about it. Raising my kids, I said things like, I don't want you to drink. Don't drink. It's bad for you. Wait till you're old enough to know better. But if you do, call me. I'll get you a ride. You know, don't drive drunk. Don't have sex this young. You really shouldn't. But if something happens, you know, come to us. And then I said, don't do drugs. And I never said, but if you get in trouble, come. And it didn't even occur to me, because of course it's off your radar. You think, I raised a good kid. He was a good kid, he was smart, he had a brain. He knew what was right and wrong. And it just, yeah, that would fast forward to heroin. Off, not on my radar. Be there and be ready for them when they're ready to accept the help. 